Yo, 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 yo. Okay, we're gonna be solving quadratic equations, but this time we're gonna be using square roots to do so. Now this won't, this method doesn't necessarily work for every quadratic equation, but it will work for certain ones. And when it does, it makes it pretty easy actually. So here's your properties of equality. Those allow you to balance out equations by doing the same property on each side of the equal sign. So what the properties of equality is basically saying, if I have something like, hold on, sorry, I have like a little delay here, there we go. If I have something like three equals three, well, if I add two to this side, it's now five. Well, if I wanna maintain that equality, I also have to add two to both sides, and then I get five equals five, where the left side is still equal to the right side because I added or did the same property on each side of the equal sign. So this is just going over properties for equations that we're going to be using when using the square root function. And we also have quadratic equation for our key terms. So let's just get into it though. Solutions for the equation x squared equals 49. So this is a quadratic equation because we have a degree of 2. So I want to solve the equation x squared equals 49. There's not there's not much to do here. All I have to cancel out is a square here. So the way I cancel out the power of 2 is I take the square root. And whatever I do on one side, I have to do on the other side. So this square root cancels out this power of 2. And I get x equals 7. However, because it's a square root, the square root could also be negative. Because negative 7 times negative 7 does equal 49. So x is equal to positive or negative seven. So those are my two solutions for this particular quadratic function. If I wanted to graph this, I could have changed it to x squared minus 49 equals zero. I could have graphed it. I could have then solved this by doing, um, by factoring, that's x plus seven, x minus seven, because those are the products that get me zero and get me to negative 49. And then I could have solved this way, and this would have worked, but because it's just a simple equation, I only have one thing to really worry about. I'm able to just take the square root and be done with it. So now we'll have equations where it's like x squared equals negative 121. So again, same thing. Take that square root to cancel, take the square root. Problem is, is that I had a negative number underneath the radical. It is impossible to have the square root of negative 121 because there are no two numbers that equal negative 121. Impossible because a positive times a positive is positive, and a negative times a negative is negative. The only way to get a negative with multiplication is a negative times a positive, which means you can't do the square root. So therefore, there's no solution. So there is no solution to this equation. So again, if I were to graph it, the parabola is either above or below. This one's because it's positive. If we're at negative 121, which is stands down here, the problem is going to be somewhere above it where it's never actually going to cross negative 121. So now sometimes you're going to have a coefficient in front of the x squared. So if you have a coefficient in front of x squared, what we do is, because there's not any addition or subtraction or anything else going on here, I could just divide by 7 first. Those cancel. I'm left with just x squared. I have to do 112 divided by 7. And when I do that, I'll get, oh, let's see here, 13, yeah, 13. Right? No. Ah, yeah, yeah, I'll actually do the division. I don't have a calculator on hand. Oh, it's 16, you idiots. I knew it wasn't 13. Come on, 16. All right, so x squared equals 16. So then from here, from x squared equals 16, now I can then just do exactly what we just did to solve. So I can take the square root and I get x equals positive or negative four. Go ahead and solve this one on your own. See how you do. So one thing I want to point out, hopefully you paused it and you already solved it. Uh, I have a negative sign over here, so I'm going to take the square root of a negative, so it should be no solution. Just kidding. Um, because we don't worry about that until we simplify everything else. So if I divide everything by negative 3, I get x squared equals positive. So I'm dividing by 
take the three first. So that's gonna give me positive eight. So now I can take the square root of eight. And then x equals plus or minus. So it depends on how you ask you to write it. It could ask you to write it as the square root of eight. I'm sure it's gonna want you to actually simplify it. So if you have to simplify this, here, let me um, make sure I have a calculator here. So you could just plug it into your calculator, round it to the nearest tenth. I know it's going to be like 2.8, but I want to make sure I'm accurate. Um, yeah, and it's 2.82. So plus or minus 2.8. And we're good there. Okay. Okay. So then finally, we're also going to have some addition and subtraction. So again, it's a quadratic equation because we're to the degree of 2. But the reason why I can solve this using the square root is because there's no b, b term. If there was a b and we had like the second x in here, now, I, now this doesn't work because I can't just take the square root to cancel out everything because I have this other x term involved. This is when it, this extra x in the middle complicates things. But if I don't have that extra x, I can just follow all my properties of equations by getting rid of the addition and subtraction first. Now I can divide by 3. And then I can take the square root. So x equals positive or negative 3. So without that x in the middle, we're able to pretty much solve it like this every time. But when we have that x in the middle, that's when this doesn't work out for us. So try this last one and uh, see how it goes. So I'm going to subtract 17 on both sides first. I get 3x squared. Let's see, that equals 192 divided by 3. Uh, I am going to use a calculator for, I get 64. So when I take the square root, I get 8. And that's positive or negative. Okay, do I have any more for you guys? Oh, I do have one more, okay. So this one's good because it's gonna make a right triangle. So we have a cell phone tire. We have the wire for the support, the guy wire that supports it that's 200 feet long. We know that this side and this side are both the same distance, okay? So then what we wanna know is what is the height of the tower? So we're solving for a side. This is where I get to use Pythagorean theorem. But the nice part is because this distance and this distance are the same, I get to use it for my leg squared plus my leg squared equals my hypotenuse squared. So this is again using Pythagorean theorem of a squared plus b squared equals c squared. The hypotenuse is 200 because that is opposite of the right angle. These are the same, so I plug both of the same value. I just plug in x for both a and b, and I square everything. I can combine these to make 2x squared equals, that's four, one, two, three, four, 40,000. Now I can solve by dividing by two. So x squared equals 20,000. And then now I can just take the square root of 20,000. And I get 141 point four. Now, we're not going to say negative on this one because it's asking for the height of an object. We don't say height is negative, so it's just 141.4. And we're good. Okay. Um, and that's all I got for you guys. So you do have an independent practice. Uh, things to remember, I would jot down that there's always a positive or a negative. Like the square root of 64 is equal to plus or minus, positive or negative. So make sure we recognize that we need to have that negative sign as well. A lot of people forget those, and that matters because we have two solutions to our quadratic equations for a lot of them, and so we need to make sure we include both. So that's it, guys. If you have any questions, let me know. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching, and thank you for your time. Peace.